I think the whole country, uh, the whole world is really suffering from a great deal of anxiety and depression. Um, we are all so tired of this disease. We are social people and we like to be together and um, everyone is saying not to and there's a good reason for that, right? We want to help stop the spread of this disease and keep as many people healthy as we can. Um, and especially with the holidays when uh, it's so, such an important part of our culture to come together. So there are resources available. Um, for parents, I would encourage if you see your children struggling um, to talk to the teacher, to talk to the school psychologist. Uh, Westchester County has an Office of Mental Health and on their website they have a great directory of a lot of resources in the community. Um, your primary care physicians uh, have a lot of resources as well. Um, in a year that's, that doesn't include a pandemic, uh, this can be a challenging time for all. And on top of this, it's really important that we stay attuned to our own mental health. So should there be signs that we look for either in children or adults, our friends, family members, that could be warning signs that it's just not the regular pandemic fatigue? Yeah, I think um, when folks are becoming even more isolated or kind of showing signs of hopelessness, like I'll never be able to get out again or um, I, I can't take this anymore or um, being maybe more risky with their choices um, either to get together or travel or just not being as cautious as they had been. I think those are good signs to look for. Um, and, and like as I said, you know, we are social and there are ways to social without physically being close and together, right? Taking a walk outside, distanced with masks on um, is an acceptable choice uh, to help our, our family members who are really struggling with being alone. Scheduling times where we can talk on the computer or, or phones, um, that can make a real difference.